The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. <laughs> Hello, Miss Williams, Casey. Hi, Ethelbert. Ethelbert, do you know what Casey just wanted to do? What, Miss Williams? Well, they just put in a fresh cement sidewalk next door, and Casey wanted to stop and write his name in it. He'll never grow up. Well, Casey's a great name. Oh, well, I'll go you one better than that. Oh, hello, Mr. Marvin. Sure. What about Anchor Hawking? You know, Anchor Hawking is a great name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey Crime Photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole. Our adventure for tonight, The Demon Miner. morning, a desolate little graveyard. In the distance, beyond the gray tombstones, can be seen the stark outlines of a towering coal breaker and row upon row of coal miners' cottages. Shivering in the cold rain, a small group of men stand bareheaded. Won't be long now, Eddie. No, Frank. In a couple of minutes, they'll start shoveling dirt on poor Joe's coffin. This is the sixth time in just the last two months that you and me have come to the graveyard to watch a guy we've worked with put away. I'm thinking of that, Frank. I've known plenty of accidents to happen, but when six in a row get killed by fallen roof rock, one right after another in the same mine level, well, it makes you wonder. Yeah, especially when you're cutting out coal in that level yourself like we are. Some of the guys say there's a hoodoo on Bristol level, Eddie. Old Gus Hapsel says there's worse than that. Oh, I've heard what that guy says, but that old guy's crazy. You think so, huh? Huh? Oh, hello, Gus. I am just stand close by and hear you talk. So you think I'd be crazy, Frank, because I say a demon is kill man's in Bristol level at Slakeville Colliery. Any guy who says that is crazy. You do not know what we of old country know. I was talking to a Welchman the other night, Frank, and he said when he comes from... And he comes from plenty of miners... Uh, well, that's uh, there's something funny that happens underground. Spirits called knockers and spriggans and, and demon miners. Oh, nuts. He, he says this demon miner works with a pick about ten times the size of ours, a pick that makes a big hollow sound. And when guys hear it, it means someone's going to die. I have heard that pick in Bristol level. Also, I have seen the demon there. I still say nuts. It was when Nick Tanofsky got killed. I am working place next to Nick. All at once I hear big thump, thump, thump. And I hear Nick yell. I run quick for my place to see what happened. And in the tunnel, number five tunnel, I see demon. He is dressed like miner, but his face, his face is white. White? Yeah. He has big fat cheeks, not like a man's. You tell that who it is somebody else. All right, you be wise guy. But remember what I tell you. Someday in the mine, you will hear and see the demon miner. Hand me some more tamping bags, Eddie. Here, Frank. I've only got one more charge to fix, and then we'll hook up to the firing box. You're putting in a lot of powder. Thirty sticks. <laughs> you know, we've got the old croaker working next to us today. Gus? Gloomy Gus. He's got 63 place. While you were out getting powder a while ago, he came in here to borrow my pick. Said he busted a handle of his. He's as crazy as a bat. He started writing about the evil spirits again. <laughs> I guess I made him sore at the cemetery the other day. He seems to really believe he saw that demon miner. And he ought to have his eyes examined, or his head. 
Hello, guys. Huh? Oh, hello, oh. Douglas. Hello. I uh, just thought I'd tip you fellas off at the inside foreman's down here again this morning, checking up. <laughs> the big bosses don't like all the accidents that's been happening. That don't bother me and Eddie. Oh, I forgot, Frank. You're the one of the best boss miners we got here, and of course... You wouldn't let your little helper, Eddie, get careless. Now, look here, Douglas. You're supposed to be an electrician. All your cables and connections are out in the tunnel, not in here. Suppose you attend to them. Sociable guy, ain't you, Frank? With people I like. Okay. So long, Eddie. So long, Douglas. Uh, someday I'm going to poke that guy right in the nose. I'm no hypocrite. And I'd like you better, Eddie, if you had a little more guts, enough to tell him off... Well, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I, I'm sorry, fella. It's okay. I I know I'm kind of a soft. Ah, guy. you're all right. And we'll have a couple of beers when we knock off. On me. Thanks, Frank. Well, everything is set here. I'll string these fuse wires to the box outside. Pick up those tools and come on. Yeah. The inside foreman spends most of his time in Bristol level these days. The accidents here have got him plenty worried. Mr. Travers is a nice guy. Too bad he wasn't made superintendent. And Travers would have made a good super. I guess he was plenty sore when Bill Jerome got the job. Well, I'm all hooked up, Eddie. Sing out the warning. Okay. Here she goes. That'll kick up a lot of dust. It'll settle in a minute and we can start loading the cars. Oh, just touch one off, Frank? Hey, yeah, Mr. Travers. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Eddie? Okay, Mr. Travers. Have you fellas seen that electrician Douglas around here? Just a few minutes ago. He went down tunnel number five. Oh, thanks. I want him to do a job. Yeah. Uh, Frank. Yeah? You and Eddie are always careful to test roof rock after you blast. Oh, sure, Mr. Travers. Okay, okay. I'll see you later. He's worried, all right. Yeah, but he ain't as worried as that new super is. Jerome's the guy the big bosses hold responsible for production. And that's dropped off plenty on account of them accidents. Yeah. A lot of guys are superstitious. They won't work in Bristol level anymore. Croak and old gloomy Gus has had a lot to do with that. Well, the dust should be settled by now. Let's go back. Okay. Uh, hand me that safety lantern. That eh, burns all right. No gases here. Cold broke up nice. Gus has my pick. Get it from him, Eddie. I'll use yours to sound the roof rock while you're gone. I'll get your pick from Gus. Real solid here. This is okay. Uh-uh, that chunk has to come off. Ah, everything looks all right now. What was that? makes that knocking. Hey, who are you coming in here? That white face. <laughs> what was it doing? Don't. 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 There's been a seventh peculiar death in that Slateville coal mine, huh, Casey? Yeah, happened yesterday, Ethelbert. A miner named Frank Adams was killed. Apparently by a piece of falling roof rock, like the other men before him. Yeah, and a few minutes ago, City Desk gave Annie and me an assignment to go to Slateville and look around. Mm-hmm. We're taking an early train tomorrow. Want to come along, Ethelbert? Who, me? After last week, I've had enough excitement. Oh, you're a softie. Well, you write up the story, Miss Williams, and Casey will take pictures, huh? Oh, no, our assignment's a little bigger than that this time, Ethelbert. Yeah? The superintendent of the mine knows Casey, and while the state police have all the facts, he's asked the paper to have Casey do a little private investigating. You're going to Slateville as detectives, huh? Uh-oh. Well, Bill Jerome, the super, knows about a couple of lucky breaks I've had working with the cops, so he's got an idea that I... Well, I don't know. When I'm in the city here, I know my way around. I've got a lot of smart, friendly cops to back me up when I make a play, but, well, I... I don't know anything about coal mines. Afraid you won't do so good when you're on your own, huh? I think our boyfriend has a case of cold feet, Ethelbert. Huh? What? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you're right, Annie. Uh, <clears throat> look, I'll, I'll, I'll see you for 
later. I'm... Where are you going? Well, I'm, I'm going to the public library. I'm going to read up on coal mines. And yeah, when I see Bill Jerome tomorrow, I won't be altogether a dope. <laughs> Well, Casey, this latest roof rock accident differed from the previous ones in an important particular. Frank Adams lived long enough to mumble a few words. Yeah? What were they, Bill? White face, demon miner. Demon miner. Say anything else? <clears throat> Nothing that could be distinguished. This, uh, this Gus Hapsel you mentioned, he, yeah. uh, he described the demon miner before as having a white face, didn't he? Yeah, after Nick Tarnowski was killed. Yes, and this, this thing was dressed in miner's working clothes and had very fat cheeks. Yeah. Well, who was the first to reach this miner, Frank Adams? Gus Hapsel was. He usually worked next to Adams, but he'd gone to borrow a pick. Gus says he heard Adams scream, and he hurried back. Yeah, was Eddie Bliss the second to reach Adams? Yeah. A few seconds later, he and Gus were joined by one of our electricians, a man named Douglas, and George Travers, our inside foreman. Gus claims that after the scream, he saw a shadowy figure disappear into a passage off number five tunnel. He's sure it was the demon miner. Where were the other two men? Douglas and Travers were in number five tunnel, too, but at a considerable distance from each other. Uh-huh. You've got to find out what's in back of this, Casey. Hmm. The demon miner theory is ridiculous, of course, but it's ruined morale, cut production in half. Now that Adam's dying words apparently confirm the demon story, now well, we're in for further trouble. Yeah. Well, just one more question, Bill. Huh? Uh, like on previous occasions, was a large piece of roof rock found near the dead man's head? Yeah. A slab of rock that'd take three or four big men to lift. Three or four? Yes, Miss Williams. As in the other cases, Adam's hard hat had been crushed and his skull fractured. What's a hard hat, Mr. Jerome? Well, it's... The... Uh, it's the miner's name for the protective helmet he's required to wear, Annie. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I know a little bit about mines and miners. Hmm. Library. Well, <clears throat> we'll go down to the mine, Bill, to Bristol level. Yeah, I'll arrange for it right away. My inside foreman's waiting in the other office. Uh, George. Come in, please. Okay, okay, Jerome. Miss Williams, Mr. Casey, this is Mr. Travis. How do you do, How Mr. Do you Travis? Do? Right to know you. Nice to know you. I've uh, told you about these friends of mine, George. They want to get acquainted with Bristol Level. I'd like you to be their guide. Well, all right. Uh, Mr. Travis, what's your opinion of these accidents and the demon miner? Same I... as mine, Casey. Both are phony. Why don't you let me speak for myself, Jerome? Oh, George. I never went to college like you, but I grew up around mines. My father was a miner in England. He's told me about strange, unexplainable things that happened there, and... Well, I'm, I'm not sure that there aren't demon miners. Oh, you're not serious. You can quote me if you like. Miss Williams, Mr. Casey, I'll get you overalls, hard hats, and lamps. Oh. Travers is a nice fellow, Casey, but well, he thought he should have had the job I got. I see. Yes. I want to become better acquainted with Travers. Yeah. Meet Douglas, Eddie Bliss, and old Gus. Planning interesting, well-balanced menus is hard enough at any time, and during Lent, it's doubly difficult. But here's one more occasion when Fire King Oven Glass comes to the rescue. All sorts of delicious, nourishing meals can be planned around a single big Fire King Oven Glass casserole dish. Macaroni and cheese baked with milk and covered with a magnificent crown of golden cracker crumbs. Old-fashioned New England baked beans with a rich brown molasses sauce. A scalloped oysters and literally hundreds of other mouth-watering main courses. Fire King Oven Glass is a must in American homes for these four all-important reasons. It simplifies the planning of meals. It simplifies housekeeping because it cuts dishwashing time by a full two-thirds. It saves the precious vitamins which are boiled out of foods in top of the stove cooking. And its cost? Well, it's incredibly low. Ask for Fire King Oven Glass at your favorite chain, variety, hardware, or department store. Each piece is guaranteed for a full two years against oven breakage. Beautiful, practical, inexpensive Fire King Oven Glass is a product of Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. The place where Frank Adams was killed is only a few hundred feet ahead now, Mr. Casey. Ooh. Well, we've really been 
Golly, I, I never dreamed that coal mines had telephones in them and electric lights. The you? lights aren't very bright. Well, that's because coal dust settles on them. Yeah. Well, where's the passage that Gus said this demon miner went into? Uh, over there. Uh, you can see it leading off just ahead. Oh. Frank's place is right here. In that dark hole? Yes, Miss Wood. We must depend on our cap lights alone when we go in there. Well, let's go in. Granny, I'll help you. It's kind of rough going. Okay, thanks. Now, Frank and his helper had just blasted a face before he was killed. Naturally, the coal's heaped all over. Jerome gave orders not to let anything be touched. Here we are. Yeah. Show me where you found the dead guy. There. You can see the blood stain. Uh, is this the slab of rock that's blamed for the death? Yes. Must weigh half a ton, Casey. Yeah, at least... That you in there, Travers? Yes, who? It's me, Douglas. Oh. Super phoned down for me to meet you here. Where's Eddie Bliss and old Gus? How should I know? They supposed to be here, too? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, this is Miss Williams and Mr. Casey. Bert Douglas. How, How are you, Mr. Douglas? Look, if you're a cop, Mr. Casey, I might as well tell you right now. I don't know anything about those accidents. You think they've been accidents, Douglas? Well, I certainly don't believe in that demon minor stuff. Maybe you have more sense if you do believe. Well, here's old gloomy Gus and help already. Hello, Mr. Travers. Hello, Douglas. Gus and I just got a message. Uh, Mr. Casey here and Miss Williams want to have a talk with all of you. Uh, Eddie Bliss and Gus Hapsel. How do you do? All I know about the accident, Mr. Casey, is that poor Frank was lying there with uh, Gus kneeling beside him when I come running in and that big slab of roof rock... That hunk of roof rock did not kill Frank Adams. It was the demon miner's peak that bossed his head. Ah, you're nuts, Gus. Maybe he isn't, Douglas. Say, Mr. Travers, you don't think... I'm I'm keeping an open mind. What are this got here? Hmm? What'd you just pick up out of that coal, Mr. Casey? Nothing, nothing at all. Casey? It was something. You just stuck it in your pocket. Yeah, I see you, too. Never mind, we'll talk about it later. Well, now, there's no reason for me to keep you from your work. You can go ahead. Go? After we just got here? Yeah, Douglas, yes. I want to talk to all of you again about an hour from now. Uh, Okay. Going down number five, Eddie? Yes, Douglas. Come on, this is screwy. Taking that guy off his job and... You want to talk with me later, huh? Yes, Gus. All right. I go back to work. Uh, Mr. Casey, I don't quite understand. Look, I'd like to examine this place with Miss Williams alone, Mr. Travers, if you don't mind. Oh, you want me to go, too? Yeah, if you don't mind. Only outside in the tunnel for a few minutes. I'll call you when I'm through here. All right, I'll wait for your call. What's this all about, Casey? Annie... I want one of those four guys to get very nervous. All of them seemed very nervous when they left just now. Yeah. What was it you picked up out of the coal? Here, take a look. What? A black powder it's puff? It's just an ordinary powder puff covered with coal dust, Annie, and underneath the coal dust, when I ruffle it up it's like this... It's full of this, white powder. Get it, Annie, the white face of the demon miner. A man covered his coal grime face with white powder? Sure. And then after he made his kill, all he had to do was to rub some coal dust on his face over the powder, and he could reappear almost instantly. In his normal character. Listen, all of those seven men have been murdered then. I think so, Annie. But how? Nobody could lift the huge rocks that crushed their skulls. Annie, look. Couldn't the killer have bashed his victims with a hunk of rock that he could handle and then have dragged the bodies over near another piece too big to handle just to make things look like they weren't? Uh Uh-oh. But why were the murders committed? And who done it? I don't know yet. Look, I'm going to call Travers back and leave you here with him. With the excuse that I want to explore some of those side passages alone, which I do. After that, I'm going to make whoever dropped that powder puff a very nervous guy. Oh, so you're back, Mr. Casey. Yes, I'm sorry, Travers. I had to keep you and Miss Williams waiting over an hour. Oh, the time passed very quickly, Casey. Mr. Travers here has been furthering my education about coal mines. That's good. Mr. Travers, I'm going to throw a question at you. If the recent deaths here were really murders, whom would you suspect of committing them? I think the man you should investigate is... is Douglas. Hmm. Huh? Why? Well, uh, well, he's always got a chip on his shoulder... He doesn't like anybody. Nobody likes him. Have you got anything real on Douglas? No. Okay, well, look, would you bring him in here and old Gus and Eddie Bliss? I'd like to talk to all of you together. All right, I'll be back with them just as soon as possible. Annie, these boys seem to be playing a game, you know that? Each one trying to throw suspicion on the other. Did you learn anything worthwhile from the others? No. The killer knows he lost that powder puff, and he suspects that I found it in this pile of coal. So he's afraid, see? 
You're going to try to get it back and to bump off the only two people who know about it. Uh, you don't mean us. Yeah, who else? Uh, Annie, switch off your cap light. Oh, now, now, why? Look, I want you to stay here in this corner in total darkness. I'll be at the other end of this little working where I can be seen. Ooh. Ah, don't worry. I'll be set for trouble, Annie. Go ahead, turn the light off. Mm -hmm. Okay, but... Now, now we wait. All right. Hey, you know, Casey, I've been thinking about that powder puff. Hmm? It can account for the dead white face of the demon miner, but it doesn't explain the puffy cheeks and all that. Casey. What? That powder puff you found was mine. What? Yours? Of course I had one of that size in a pocket of these overalls before we came Annie, down here, and now it's gone. Annie, for... Look, this means the whole idea's cockeyed. Why didn't you tell well, me? I didn't know it was gone till now. It never occurred to me to look until I just... The... Casey. Casey, do you hear that knocking? I sure do. That is the sound of a giant pick. Annie, you stay here. Don't leave me, Casey. It's coming closer. Oh, Casey, that face! Listen, there's nothing isn't human. It is a demon. And look out, it's gonna kill you. Oh, it's not! Casey! I'm okay, Annie. You only broke my cap light. Yeah, but I can't see. Annie's broken away from me. Turn on your light so I can see. Just a minute, I can't find the switch. Oh, there, there, I have it now. Where is he? Well, the... the... Thing seems to be going. Wait a minute, he ran back into the tunnel, Annie. I'm going after Don't him. Don't leave me! You stay there! Oh, gee. All right. <laughs> you are. I didn't run into you the are. tunnel. I was behind this pile of coal. Did you come any closer to me? <laughs> Keep away! <laughs> Don't! Don't! <laughs> Or did my fingers press too tight on her throat? <laughs> we'll switch on a cap light so we can see. What? <laughs> uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the lady's afraid when she sees my face. I'm, I... Where have you brought me? To an old working of the mind that's boarded up. No one but me knows that the boards can be moved. A door. I fixed them that way. You're a man. Yeah. You're not anything supernatural. Look at my these big cheeks, just wide mouthed. Your friend Casey was trying to trap me, but he won't trap me. And to pay him for his meddling, you are going to die. No. Yes, no. after you're dead, he'll feel the pick in his skull. Only it's not a pick I use. It's a heavy rock. Like this! Oh, don't! Please, don't! Uh, he won't! Oh, it's okay, kid. We got our oh, demon miner right on the button. I spotted this place when I was snooping around a while ago. Casey, you know you got here just in time. Uh, Seems like it. Yeah, that rat's coming, too. Let's have a look at it. Uh, well, let me go. Casey. Casey, it's Eddie Bliss. Yeah. Meek little Eddie. Yes. Meek little Eddie. A guy without guts. That's what chumps have always taught me. Thirty years I worked in mines as a helper. They wanted to keep me just a shoveler of coal. A helper! I've... Shown them what I can do now. Little bosses like Frank Adams and big bosses like the Super. I made guys afraid to work here. Yes, I've killed. <laughs> I'm, I'm the boss now. I'm, I'm, I'm the boss now. I'm... Casey, they never sent him to the chair. No, it's a squirrel's I'm nest for Eddie. There are, there are still a few things I don't I'm understand the... about this. Well, I can explain them to you, kid, after I get a camera. I've got to take some pictures of this 
demon miner. You know, I was brought up on a farm, and we used to figure we were pretty lucky, particularly when we thought of the people who lived in the cities. Why, all year round, we enjoyed fresh food. Fish from the lake below our farmhouse, caught through the ice in the wintertime, and fresh vegetables from the vegetable cellar, magnificent hams and sausages during the slaughtering time after Christmas. Well, well, now that I've become a city man myself, I find that there's no longer any need to envy the people back on the farm. Crystal clear sanitary anchor glass containers bring you all the products of orchard, field, and stream packed at the very peak of perfection 12 months a year. And then, too, glass lets you see exactly what you buy before you buy it. Glass containers preserve their contents perfectly with no effect on taste or flavor. They're easy and safe to open and can be resealed to protect the unused portions. Anchor glass containers and easy-to-remove anchor vacuum caps so widely used for the packaging of foods of all kinds are products of Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. can see why heavy powder accounts for the guy having a white face in that dirty mine, Casey. But how did he make his cheeks so wide? Well, that was simple, Ethelbert. He was an old kid trick, stuffed a couple of walnuts in his mouth. Which, of course, bulged out his cheeks, widened his mouth, and distorted his voice. But when Casey hit him... Yeah, he coughed him out. Hmm. There's one more thing. The sound of that giant pick you heard. Well, Eddie made that sound by bumping a rock drill against a wall. Hmm. Boy... Did we have luck in busting that case, Ethelbert? You know, Annie, <laughs> since it was your powder puff that I found in that coal, I, I can't understand why Eddie made that risky attempt to kill us. He had no reason to believe that we had any evidence. And we didn't have. Boy, I'm, I'm a hot detective, all right. <laughs> Everything that I did was based on that powder puff, you know? Um, Casey. Hmm? Um, I have a confession to make. What's that? I found my powder puff in my coat pocket. I didn't even take it in the mine. You did? You didn't? Nope. <laughs> Ethelbert, uh, <clears throat> uh, what's this stuff I hear about a small timer called uh, Sherlock Holmes? <laughs> Prime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor glass containers, anchor caps and closures. All products of the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation. A great name in glass. Prime Photographer is directed by John Dietz and features Miss Leslie Woods as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Eddie was played by Ted Osborne. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. The Red Cross carries on for veterans, for military hospitals, and for all communities in time of disaster. You can help by giving generously now. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, the world's largest maker of household glass. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.